Scott, can you just maybe give us an update of how practice has gone since the weekend and where you guys are now? And you, you feel happy with where you guys are? Yeah, I thought we had a really good practice today. Uh, obviously, having a little extra time with the bye week uh, helps us get everything in and, and hopefully execute a little better. So I think both teams will enjoy the benefits of that, but definitely helped us heal up a little bit and uh, also give us a little more time. So. I was wondering about Vernon. He, we just talked to him. Uh, how Has he gotten better? Incrementally, or has he made giant steps, say, since he's gotten a little bit healthier? Well, I think health has been the biggest thing for him. Uh, he played a whale of a game in the first ball game until he got hurt. Uh, then we had him out there a couple times when he wasn't at full strength. And uh, he played well in the last game. Um, would have loved to have run him for a long time. I think with, with some experience and, and knowledge of our system, I think he would have been a really good player around here. still think he is. Uh, he's learning every week, um, but in that last game, he made some plays that, that really bailed us out. Scott, when he was getting healthy, there were a lot of people on uh, social media outsiders saying that the sky is falling in New Zealand. As much as you can imagine, like but all your players are on Twitter, they're on Facebook. So what are you saying to them in meeting rooms to make sure that maybe a fragile confidence is not completely falling apart? Well, I think our guys are smart enough here to trust what we do, to trust our process, to trust the talent that we have in this program. Uh, we have a ton of talent in this program. A lot of it's young, and, and some of it was hurt early on. Uh, but that's every team, so there's no excuses. Uh, but you know, we talk to kids all the time about not listening to the detractors, not listening to critics. Most of the people that are criticizing tend to draw 11 guys in a football field where they're supposed to line up. Uh, so the people that think they know things don't, and I think these kids that, that trust them, trust themselves and trust their teammates and, and trust everything about what we're doing, um, they're going to keep playing. What type of load does it take off of Royce now that you guys have talked to him? I think it helps. Uh, anytime we're balanced, we're a better team. Um, you know, they're there for a while. We felt like our best chance was to run it a bunch, and, and we ran it well when we did, which was great to see. Uh, but if we can make throws downfield, it reduces everything out. So we're going to have to be fine. What do you see out of Arizona State with Yeah, Blitz heavy is an understatement. Uh, these guys blitz not just one extra guy, but two extra guys a, a bunch of the time. I think their blitz percentage is uh, between 55 and 60 percent. So in more than half the plays they're coming out after us. Um, really, I, I think what they do is try to create chaos. And, um, they take away the easy things so that hopefully your quarterback's standing back there and they can get to them. Um, watching games against Arizona State, uh, it's boom or bust. Uh, teams look like they're getting shut down, and one series will be minus two, minus two, minus six, and punt, and then the next series will be the same, and then the next series there's a 60 yard play. Uh, so that's the kind of game we're going to do. You guys haven't played Arizona State in a couple of years. What have you told Vernon and your team about handling? Uh, a scheme like that, a, a blitzing scheme like that? Well, just to be patient. I think we're going to have to be patient. There's going to be some series they win. When when they're going to be that aggressive and gamble, uh, you know, they're going to make their share of plays. Uh, we just have to hit on our share of plays, too, and hopefully when we hit on our share of plays, they're big plays. Ver Vernon said uh, the best game he thinks he's ever played was that Oregon State game two years ago. When they got into, uh, and, and beat the Beavers. Had you noticed him before that game? Was that kind of like when he kind of came across everyone else's radar? Uh, I think I noticed Vernon when I watched him on tape against a couple of teams that we were playing. So, um, and then you hear a lot about good players, no matter what level they are. But I remember watching him on tape and, and thinking he was a special player. What, where's he at right now compared to you know when he was fuck four years in the Eastern system? Like how, how much can he, better can he get with with you guys? Right now? I've been amazed by Vernon's football knowledge and intellect since he got here. Um, he picked everything up really fast. Uh, you know, that being said, that when you're a new player, there's always something that hasn't shown up yet that he learns it. Once he learns it, he learns it. But there's a lot of things that we just haven't gotten around to teaching. Him. So I think every week that he plays, he's going to continue to be more comfortable and, and get better. When you first watched him, did you think, how the hell is this kid playing in an FCS school? There's a lot of great players at FCS schools. Uh, I was at Northern Iowa before I came here, and, and we had a, a really good team. Um, beat Iowa State, played with BYU. Uh, we had 10 or 12 guys on that team that I think could have played at any uh, FCS, FBS school. So um, the recruiting's in inexact science. There's guys that fall through the cracks, and 
with, with Power Five schools and end up with, with other schools, and that's why you see some of these, some of these other schools having great years and, and playing. Scott, yeah, I, I, you know that's kind of the story of the year right now. It's close. Um, you know, we've been close in two games we haven't won, and really we've had three three games that have come down to the last play, and we've won one of them. Um, when you when you have those type of games, uh, one more player here or there puts you over the top. And that's execution. That's experience. Um, play calling. It's a lot of things. A lot of things that have made one play difference. Offensively, I think we've been really good at times, and at other times uh, we've missed on some things. So uh, we get everybody healthy and, and get up and going. I feel good about where we are. Uh, we just have to make sure that, that we're executing at a high level. With Darren Carrington back in the lineup, does that maybe change the way you can use Braylon Addison within the offense? Getting Darren back is big. You know, obviously, getting Vernon and Darren back last year or last week made a huge difference in the game. Uh, we, we loved our depth at receiver coming into the year. Obviously, we've had a couple guys go down, but uh, still like where we are. Braylon Addison's the type of kid that can do about anything you ask him for in football. Scott, kind of along that same line, how much will Charles play on offense? You know, he's been pretty amazed at the kind of how much productivity he's made on defense and offense. No, Charles is a phenomenal football player. Uh, he was our best special teams player last year. Um, one of our best offensive players last year once we got him going about midseason. Um, I think he'll be one of our best defensive players going forward. So you know, the more comfortable he gets on defense, uh, the more we'll be able to use him off on offense. He knows the offense, so we just have to make sure he, he knows what he's doing on the other side so we can skate. You talk about being close. It's kind of the second half of the season where teams are finding out who they are. Are you guys pretty close to being who you are? Um... Yeah, we're always who we are, uh, but I think we can always get better. Um, you know, we, at, like I said, at times I think we've played really well. It just hasn't quite been consistent enough or quite enough to get us over the top in a couple games. Um, this league right now is good top to bottom, and I think every week you're going to see fights. Uh, you're going to see games that come down to the end. I think just about anybody in this league can beat just about anybody else, so there's going to be a lot of close games. It's great for fans to watch. It's stressful for a coach. <laughs> Scott, are you having to find yourself to be more selective than when you use the tempo, given that you're running maybe between plays, getting the ball inside and translating it, beating it to the guys? Do you more selective that way, or is that something you can see increasing? Yeah, we haven't been quite as fast this year. I, I think that partly has to do with you know, uh, our quarterback isn't quite as familiar with the system. Um, there's a couple games where we're running the ball more, and didn't necessarily want to go fast with that. I always said if, if our defense has been on the field a long time, I don't want to go fast and put the defense right back on the field if it doesn't work. So uh, we'll pick our spots with the tempo. I think tempo could be a big factor this week. How do you feel about Thursday games? Um, Thursday games are fine. Uh, we can get ourselves ready to play any time, any day of the week. Uh, you know it's going to be a challenge down there. It's a tough place to play. Uh, but we know you know the whole country will be watching the game on Thursday night. Anything else?